Hey guys, this is Aaron. I'm going to walk you through the process I went through to take this model of the U.S. Capitol from the 3D warehouse and get it ready for 3D printing. The first thing I did was delete the extra information out of here. I didn't need any of the landscape information, so I deleted that. Then I used the rotate command to straighten the group. This gives me the ability to see which planes are actually in line with the axes and which aren't. This is really important when it comes to things like copying window and door openings across the walls. Next thing I did was optimize the building. I took the dome and put it on its own layer, that way I could turn it off, and then I deleted one half of the building. This building is symmetrical, so it repeats. I didn't need to have both sides. Next thing I did was took all the columns, which were components that repeated, and put them on their own layer as well. That way I could turn them off and work with the rest of the building without having to worry about what was happening to the columns. The next step was put in a ground plane. So I put this in and intersected it with the model. Then I could go underneath the model and delete the sections of wall that extended beyond the ground plane. The next step was to go around and delete extra lines or off-axis lines. Any lines at this point that weren't the color of an axis, since color by axis is turned on, were removed from the model, either deleted or moved, so that they were on axis. Again, it's really important for these surfaces of the walls to be on axis when it comes to putting in doors and windows. We'll see that in a little bit. Uh, at this point, I just ran around and cleaned up and made sure that any of those lines were removed, and any extra lines, lines that we're just breaking up surfaces I would delete. Like here in the roof there was one or two that I just took out. The next step was to replace two-dimensional surfaces with proper 3D surfaces. Since two-dimensional surfaces can't get printed, uh, any section that was modeled in 2D had to be replaced with something that was at least two feet thick. Uh, because of the scale that this model is going to be printed at, anything smaller than about two feet uh, was removed or not used. Uh, in this case, when I actually print this, one foot will be about the thickness of a single layer of filament on a 3D printer. So here, any place where I need a floor uh, this, that was pushed pulled up to two feet deep, and any walls were pushed to two feet deep as well. That process was repeated on all the column sections around the building. Next step is to replace the stairs with ramps, basically. Again, because stairs are less than a foot tall, they won't be printed. So they're replaced with just single surfaces at the slope of steps. When they're printed out, they'll look like stairs because of the layers of filament. Next step was to add doors and windows. I did this by drawing a rectangle over the image, the location of a window, and then using push-pull to push that surface in one foot. Pushing in one foot will create a real small minor relief on the final printed model. What I do is create a vertical row of windows and doors and then use the modifier key and the move command to copy those across the surface. This is where having that uh, the lines along the axis was real important. So having it line up with the green and red axis meant that I could copy those across the surface and they would push into the surface properly. Then, whenever possible, I would grab as large a group of windows as I could and use the modified move key to copy that to other walls. If need be, I would add a section plane to the model so that I could do a group select and select a group of windows along a wall. This keeps me from accidentally selecting geometry in the back that I can't see and only grabbing the windows off of the plane in front of me. These commands were used to put all the windows in around the building. Next thing I did was turn the columns back on and start cleaning them up. Since their input is components, I could open one instance and clean it up. I started by removing the details at the bottom. Again, it was pretty small, far less than a foot, so it was just extra detail I didn't need. Removed those, and then I simplified the geometry in the column itself. Since 
this is getting printed so small, I don't need a real well-faceted column like this. I can actually replace it with a eight-sided polygon and extend that up as the column instead of the circle that was there before. Just made the model a little bit lighter, less geometry, and uh, less information to try to print. Once the columns are cleaned up, I exploded them and intersected them with the model. Then I went around and did cleanup where the extra geometry is left inside the building. Next step is to start making this into a solid. So I'm going to close it up with a couple of lines to uh, make it one closed piece. The dome on the top was actually a component, so I exploded that and intersected it with the model. And I filled the entire model with default white and a backside surface of purple. I just use purple because it's not the same as any other colors and it contrasts pretty well with the rest of the model. At this point, I buzzed around and started cleaning up, deleting extra lines or surfaces that I didn't need on the model. I also added a little additional detail to the gables. At this point, I continued cleaning the model. This means deleting extra lines where the exploded columns intersected with the main building, and hopping inside and deleting extra lines around the roof or the walls that intersect the exterior of the building. One of the two plugins that I used when prepping this model for 3D printing was Cleanup. Cleanup has a bunch of commands. One of the most useful ones for what I'm doing was deleting the extra lines. Uh, you just be careful with Cleanup. One of the options on Cleanup is to remove hidden geometry, which would be bad in this case because the entire dome is turned off right now. I don't want to delete that but I did use it to get rid of the extra lines and merge surfaces together as I was going through and cleaning up the inside of the building. At this point, there was just a lot of spinning through the model and deleting surfaces and lines that didn't need to be there. Once I thought that looked good, I took the whole thing, made it into a group, and ran the second extension, which is Solid Inspector. Solid Inspector runs through and tells me if I have any geometry that's stray that I need to clean up before this group will be considered a solid, which is essential for 3D printing. At this point, I can take the model, which is now a solid, copy it, use scale to mirror it, and join the two pieces together by exploding and intersecting. Then I can delete the extra lines at the seam, and I have one piece that is the majority of the building. Next step was to use layers to turn on the dome and get that ready to join with the rest of the building. There was a little bit of a gap between the dome and the rest of that model, so I did have to add some geometry to tie it together, but then I could intersect it with the model and delete the extra geometry on the inside. Okay, let's pause right here. Somebody has asked me why I filled the whole thing with the white material as I was working through here rather than keeping the textures on. There's two reasons. One is the model's quicker, snappier, if I don't have those textures on there. Second is because of this right here. You can see the default back material in this model was actually a picture of the dome of the Capitol building. And that just made it difficult to work inside here and tell dimensions and depth when I had that thing splattered all over the inside of the building. Final steps here was cleaning up some of the geometry, running the cleanup extension, then grouping it, and running the solid inspector again. Once it was done, I had my completed model. Final steps were to resize the model using the tape measure command. The entire dimension of the final printed model was 4 inches and 13 sixty-fourths. And then finally, to share the model up onto 3D Warehouse.